to uh, unmute the mic and speak. And I'm sure we'll hear. Uh, very much here. Yes. Oh yes, very much. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't see you. Nice to see. You. Please uh, go time, ahead. Sir. One time, hello. Uh, you gave a very inter good introduction to Isaac Thomas to at least to those who do not probably know him closely. I I I have worked with him because uh, Isaac. Uh, I had one big advantage with Isaac while working. That is, he knew cinema. You know, he knew cinema so well. It was very easy to work with him. You don't have to keep on explaining things, you know. He understood it. He, I show him the film that he understands. I, I give suggestions and he readily agrees, yes, I will do it like this. Like that, only we could work together only on two films. But then uh, he was remarkably good in those film, uh, films. And uh, only very lately I came to know that uh, uh, I said was uh, composing music, you know. I, I, otherwise, I would have <laughs> asked him to work with me even earlier. But then he was very constantly working with Arvind and that I noticed. And uh, he has done very good work there. And also, I think Girish also has uh, worked with him, Girish Kasroli also. So he has been uh, basically associating himself with the offbeat cinema, I can see. Not the regular commercial uh, lot of films. So that marked him out as someone uh, who is who has been with the kind of the off, off beat cinema and the, and the virtual cinema, I must say. So he had his contribution uh, to our kind of cinema. So he, and uh, as you said, uh, Isaac was someone who was so so very soft, you know, so very nice and so very considerate about others, and then he was. Uh, behaving like he knew things. You know, you know, it's not like somebody will jump up on an idea and then talk to you like that. No, not at all. He was that uh, self-assurance of things, of the, in his knowledge, and uh, and the way he was, he was very organized also. In fact, uh, if he tells you that it will take two days to uh, score, background score for a, for a particular film, then it exactly you know, goes like that. You know, there is a there's a, there was a lot of planning, there was a lot of discipline in his work. And, uh, and he, he couldn't make any, in his life, that was a big failure. He couldn't make any enemies uh, <laughs> out of the acquaintances. Everybody loved him, you know. He was, we have only very loving memories about him. He was a remarkable person. He came from a very well-known family, Kotakapalli family. And then he could behave like, you know, like a somebody who, who doesn't care for others, etc. You know, it was completely different. He has such a, such a deep-rooted culture in him, you know, the, uh, which comes to you only with uh, deep knowledge about things, deep understanding about human uh, behavior, etc. So I am, I am a great admirer of uh, Isaac Thomas. Uh, Isaac Thomas could be helpful. So um, that's all. I don't want to take others' time and go on talking about <laughs> My personal experience with him, he has been a remarkable person. I was, I felt very bad when I heard about his demise, you know. It was very untimely, I must say. Uh, unfortunately, he was away in Madras and I, I couldn't go and find him, see him, etc. So I, it was very, very sad loss in our lives. That's what I thought. A very, very big loss in our lives. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shri uh, Adhugo Balakrishna. Uh, uh, I, I had uh, Girish Kasaravali on my list next, but since Madhu is, in fact, Madhu had initially said he may not be able to join us because in the middle of a shoot, but it's nice that he's been able to join us. I'm going to change the order a bit, ask Madhu to speak, and then proceed with the list after that. Case. Go ahead, Madhu. Madhu, Madhu Ambart is a well-known cinematographer who is very close to Isaac, and I leave it to him to say the rest. I Go ahead, Madhu. Was one of my dearest and closest, uh, closest associates. I, as Shashi said, uh, uh, I know him from 1970s, and he was he was my swamis support trip killer. As uh, uh, Aduri said, he knows cinema so thoroughly that you don't have to explain anything to him. He knew exactly what to do. 
he knew where to give the music, where not to give the music. And uh, his shock had left such a such a, a blankness in me that I don't know uh, 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 whom I should approach for my next film to do me, me music. I think it was perfect. I think it was always always my choice number one. Uh, 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 only film I did one is to one point six and not to lost love. I think gave such a beautiful music that I cannot explain it. It was so unbelievable. I will miss him uh, uh, all through my life. I had to rush up Shashi because uh, sh- 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 shot is almost ready. So, yes. bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you, Madhu, for joining us. Thank, thank, you, thank you very Shishi. much. I'm thank glad you, you were able to make it. Thank you for organizing this wonderful meeting, Shashi. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I could stay till the end, but unfortunately, I cannot. Sorry. I'm glad, but I'm sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank I'm you. so happy that I could join at least for a, for, for a uh, fun time. Certainly. Uh, it made a big difference. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 I'll now request uh, Mr. Girish Kasaravalli, who, as we all know, is uh, one of our uh, great filmmakers, uh, Kannada, Karnataka, really. Uh, who Isaac has worked with Girish a lot. I request uh, Girish to give us, uh, say a few words. Uh, <clears throat> hello. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I have known Isaac for more than uh, five decades. You know, in 74, he joined FTI when I was in the final year of uh, direction. was a direction student. And in the first year itself, he became very popular because of three things. One is his articulation, brilliantly could put forward any argument. Second is his understanding of cinema. Third, one advantage we had over the other uh, students is his knowledge of music. He was very good in, you know, Western classical music and people would... uh, uh, would love, love to discuss uh, music with him. So that was uh, how my association with uh, Isaac Thomas grew. And uh, in the one year where we spent at FTI, I suddenly I realized what a uh, perceptive uh, analysis he would put forward regarding films and things like that. You know, so that uh, uh, bounded us very well. That bounded us very well. Later. Uh, when I started making films, he joined my team somewhere in 1997 with his, uh, 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 where we worked together was Thai Saheba. And, uh, you know, from then onwards, we have worked together for six films. I have made only six, uh, 15 films, out of which uh, uh, from 1970-97 onwards, all the music was scored by uh, Isaac Thomas. In fact, uh, my second film with him was uh, Dweepa, wherein he sent the music, scratch music beforehand itself, something very totally unheard of. He once, uh, we met him, I met him in Chennai. He asked me, what is the uh, theme of my next film? I narrated the story. He said, let me send you the scratch music. And I had the great advantage of listening to the music and playing it to the artist so that they could synchronize their uh, you know, movements, um, uh, emotions with the music. That was a great experience. One great thing about Ardu uh, uh, with Isaac was that he had worked with many, many major directors, including Adur Gopalakrishnan and uh, Arvindan. He was actually earlier working with Arvindan. He also worked with him as associate director and also the music director for some time. And... Uh, <clears throat> When I gave him the you know uh, music sheets, he would work. You know, if I say starts from this footage to this footage, he would synchronize the music. Unlike many other uh, music directors, he would come there. And uh, once what happened, you know, I sent him the uh, rough cut, and later I edited it. And then he was struggling. He says, "What is what is the problem?" I asked him. Girish, the music is not synchronizing. He said, "Why?" He said. I scored, you know, the beats were supposed to match with their cut points. Then I said, it's my mistake. I've edited the film. Then he asked me never to do that. Henceforth. One great thing about uh, Isaac was that uh, 
uh, his understanding of music was very good. His understanding of cinema was very good. And that helped me a lot. He was not just a music director who would come there with, you know, so only so he would think only about the music, but he would actually think about the uh, entire film grammar as such. And he would say, he would even tell me this cut is not good, this can you go and all that kind of thing. He is also one, he would add music only when there is a uh, need. Somebody told me a music director should be like a wicket keeper. He shouldn't try to catch all the ball. So in, on the contrary, you know, Isaac knew exactly that. And that's why one that made him one of the very, very highly sought after. Uh, as a man, I think we had gelled very well. We had uh, similar uh, attitudes over life. We had similar expectations from uh, films. So, you know, it was a very good thing. I, it's very unfortunate that... Uh, uh, I, I came to know about his sad demise much later, after three days. You know, such a strange world. And uh, otherwise, uh, you know, it's so sad that uh, I couldn't, I didn't know, I, I, I couldn't, re you know, I reacted to his death uh, much later. It's very, very sad feeling, you know. And a great uh, connoisseur of art, a lover of cinema, and a man who thinks who just you know go with the emotions who think and you know, analyze the film that was a great uh, so i'm really thankful to you for organizing this you know meeting where we could express our uh, feelings thank you thank you girish for for being here uh, in fact i must say that shaji karun uh, was the person and who who instigated me to to, to organize this and uh, he has played a advisory role throughout behind the scenes uh, including telling me who else to call. Of course, many names are obvious, but there were several friends of Isaac's whom I didn't know, whom he knew. And so I'm now going to request Shaji Karun, uh, who also, I mean, who is perhaps one of Isaac's very close friends, closest friends, to say a few words now. Thank you, Shashi, for, for organizing this. It is the initiative of Shashi that we could be able to make it together in this day. Uh, us remembering Isaac, which is always in our heart for a, even further days because of this quality. And uh, uh, the reason for us, he graduated in uh, film direction and then he opted for the music. Why is a, a question for many filmmakers, including Sugan Dada, who is there in, with his classmate who also made the film, but then we used to tell them make films. But he said, cinema is much bigger than me. And so that the respect goes to the cinema. I'm not capable that I would say that. I'm not a person who say that, that respect I could be able to share with the cinema. But his music, which was his idea, uh, that's why he chose and, he's, and he always uh, loves to tell us what kind of films he wanted to make. And according to us, we used to tell that uh, he must have written like 1,000 hour screenplays. And we used to say that, which is the screenplay you can want to share. And we always say that 510, because it's so, such a way of the vast images in idea of cinema, which is beyond your thoughts, I can say. Probably, I never met him at the institute. And then I met him at a friend that was Tambu as director there. I had a, a, a kind of intimation or other kind of, who is he? This is the first encounter I had at the locations at Tambu. I was shooting randomly and he came back and he was standing behind me and there was a shot which I wanted to do. And suddenly uh, a dog appeared and in front of the camera or rather this. 
uh, the scenes which are here should be. And he was very, very uncomfortable. And I asked why uh, Isaac, you are uncomfortable. And he said, uh, when you take a nest shot, then the continuity of that dog, he said, if the situation is happening, why there is that? <laughs> that uh, tail is there and that whole thing. So he was such a jump in one way to say that the amount of uh, clarity and the amount of the honesty and the amount of, uh, I would say, rather uh, the commitment for the cinema, probably very, very difficult that I can uh, bring on somebody uh, when you say the honesty behind the cinema, which he always held us about every time. And uh, I remember uh, Chitra is here and uh, we showed after the marriage, uh, and he showed me some of the best feelings that uh, uh, Chitra was also very, very supportive to make a feeling. But Chitra, after watching the cinema, he said uh, Chitra also understood. And she kept quite uh, saying that many of the major uh, masters who made the cinema. And he looked at, uh, she looked at the cinema and then realized that how wonderful these films, which also brought him down, <laughs> saying that his, uh, the way uh, her, uh, his wife understood the film. And then that's one way of understanding his honesty in many layers of the I understand. And also um, the music. For example, a, a filmmaker who graduated in film direction and recognizing where you want this music, which is one of the finest examples. I would say that I could be able to say this, don't need it. And the amount of his uh, upgradations in knowing the uh, music all over the world, uh, like you know, many of the major uh, music directors, he always sees these subtleties and he's always thought that I want, he wanted to do an opera. And that is his wish also, which I know that uh, some of the time when he do the, uh, something like 200 uh, violins in front of him, it is a dream, which is uh, probably if he had lived for another two, many years, probably he would have done that dream. That was his aim also. And uh, of course, as a good friend, more than that, and he always look at my film and say that what he doesn't like, what he liked, and uh, he always said that he, this is not the right one, this is not the, it's a critical of the cinema, which is a great, great uh, value which I find in him. And having his thoughts here at this moment, I honestly believe I, uh, we don't get a friend like you. And we, it is in a moment that she has done it. It is a wonderful occasion, but our memories are cherished through these memories also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shaji. And of course, I'm not introducing many of the people like Shaji because you're so well known. Shaji, of course, is one of the ace cinematographers and directors uh, in India. He is, uh, and uh, so I, I but, so I'm, uh, forgive me if I'm not introducing some of these people because that would be like a bit of an arrogance on my part. Um, Shaji mentioned Sukhwan Singh Dada, but before I go to him, just to break the uh, continuity of filmmakers after filmmakers, I'm requesting Paul Sakaria, uh, who of course has a lot to do with films because it's, the script was converted into a film by Adurgo Palakrishnan, for instance, but who is also a very well-known writer and novelist, uh, both in Malayalam and English, uh, Paul Zakaria. Paul, are you there? Please unmute yourself in case you're... Paul Zakaria, are you... I, I don't see you, but... I'm hoping you're somewhere here. Yeah. 
voice is not heard some issues with the is he there is paul there yeah yeah he is there he's oh paul you are you are you are muted you have to unmute yourself paul no no he has unmuted it oh. but maybe not you are not hearing me not hearing probably that you have to take the jack out of the ah yes sir and then do that no no i can't hear you can't hear you there's no sound down ah yes yes that means this earphone was creating the problem sorry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's right shashi thank Go you ahead. and uh, uh, i second i i we have known each other for a long time because uh, he is my cousin and also a very good friend right from the beginning and uh, you know i want to recall here one a small moment from uh, from the time he wanted to become a filmmaker because that's it's not something that many of you would have heard or would have uh, imagined in the sense he was in love with films right from i think when in from his teenagers because his brother who had the same who has the same name as me he was a great film fan and film lover and he ran a film society in pala i must remember him in connection with iso because that man was a remarkable uh, you know connoisseur of films and a lover of films in fact it is in isaac's house that i i saw for the i, I have seen for the first time i am seeing uh, films and filming and uh, sight and sound i had that is uh, i am talking about 60s and 70s so isaac was already into that stream of enjoying films loving films reading about films and he was quite up to date then he wanted to go to the film institute and there there was some interesting problem because the family wasn't very sure that this is the way their boy should go because cinema never had a fantastic reputation as a as an art form or as a profession Uh, i mean all over kerala especially in a very conservative uh, uh, you know christian background like ours cinema was for the outcast let us say not 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 uh, outcast but uh, outcast or rebel so what or what but john abraham was there you know a very typical example of a rebel and who had made himself an outcast so i said then approached me because i was already you know the only artist in the family so so to say and i had some credibility with his brothers because i was a well behaved artist also so to say <laughs> so uh, he took me to his brothers and they said okay we trust you up to a point but then you go to our first cousin uh, who was a he was one of the he was a bookworm one of the best read people i ever met his name was we called him kutap and i forget his official name he lived in, in the backwaters kutanad and was principal of a college there he studied in st xavier's bombay and all very extremely well educated very knowledgeable person so he to uh, to talk to kutapan he hired my services and also the services of john abraham so john and i took him all the way to, to the backwaters traveling by country boat and then partly by the other boat and then by bus etc etc we finally we reached uh, went to kutapan's house and he explained to him what this whole business of film making is and what film institute is and kutapan gave him the permission and in fact kutapan rang up his brother see if i remember right and told him it may be all right for him to go to the film institute so i had this small role to play in the making of isaac as a as a filmmaker or in the formal making he was already a filmmaker in his heart and in his mind everything but this formal training in the institute john and i uh, played a part john always played a part i mean he was very close to john abraham and uh, even though both had totally different natures they were very intimate in their own way so this is how and i second i remained very close not only really as cousins as family members but also as because you need not be a friend to be told your family members you know everyone knows that so but we were very close we were very intimate there was hardly any secret you did no no i i did so that way and uh, 
uh, she has already said what I wanted to say because one number one, uh, even uh, Girish said that he was a perfectionist, total perfectionist. Therefore, I think that's one of the reasons he, <clears throat> he couldn't really get down to making films because by the time he wrote the script, he will be disillusioned because the thing that the film he dreamt about was not there in the script or whatever, whatever. So finally, I think he kept away. He withdrew himself from the real product because he knew that it would not be or he feared that it would not be up to the mark of his, his perfectionist standards and uh, yardsticks. That could be one of the reasons. And he was a perfectionist in everything he did. Very orderly, extremely careful, very, very you know, organizing things in a perfect way. And the other thing what Shashi said also is something that I wanted to say that a man without malice of any kind, as, uh, as Shashi said, he also, <clears throat> because I used to, I, there are massive sessions of gossip, you know, in which he used to sit as a silent witness and he wouldn't say a word. He would only, and sometimes I would say, as Shashi said, I would try to goad him to say something bad about somebody whom I disliked or some or somebody whom I thought he would he should dislike, but not a word would come out of his mouth. He was incapable of feeling. He was non-judgmental. That is that's actually that's what he was. From somewhere along the path, I don't know, from his reading, etc., etc., and from as uh, Adur Gobalushan said, from his cultural background, etc., etc., he had picked up this. Quite, uh, quite early. In fact, I learned to be non judgment much later. He was already non judgment He would judge a person harshly or in any way. He would be very one of the most tolerant people I have ever seen. So it is uh, it is sad that he did, didn't make any uh, any films. I am sure if he had made films, they would have been absolutely beautiful and wonderful. We have worked together on scripts. We worked on John Abraham's script for a film which was not made. We worked together on that, and I worked, started a script with him on some other subject. None of them ever got made, but I know the attention he paid and the total fascinating kind of interest and uh, application he brought to the writing itself. And uh, I think, as Girish said, he knew cinema so well. So he was a so called walking encyclopedia of. Uh, of, of of, of cinema. I mean, that's a very crude way of putting it because he carried the finest films in his mind, in his heart, and he loved them. It was not as if he could reel off information and say that, look, this is what, this is what. So he was a great film lover. I, I mean, uh, I'm concluding, I always thought that Film Institute produced uh, two kinds of filmmakers. One were filmmakers who went ahead and made real films. The other, uh, the, the lot was film dreamers. I think we also needed film dreamers who dreamt about the finest films that should be made, but could never really finally get down to making those films. But I said that way, John also was a film dreamer. And, uh, you know, both were propagandists, I would say, for, for, for good cinema. And, uh, well, I miss him because it's, it's like a chapter closing in my life. It's that uh, I asked Shashi when I, Shashi hadn't heard it, so I rang up and said, Shashi, I heard this news. And uh, it was, my whole family was in, uh, in tears because he was so close to my family. So thank you very much, Shashi. And, uh, thank you, thank you, Paul. I now request uh, Sukhwan Singh Dada, who is uh, another very close friend of Isaac's. I was introduced to him once by Isaac, that's how I know him. Uh, Sukhwan, please go ahead. Are you here? Sukhwan Singh? It's muted. It's muted. Uh, no. You're muted. You'll have to unmute. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks Thank a lot, Shashi, for organizing this meeting in memory of our dear friend. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, Isaac, uh, I mean, every, everything is been told about Isaac, how, how nice person he was. In fact, me and Shaji, we used to joke about it, 
that the thing against uh, Isaac is that he's too good a person. So you can't hold anything against him. He's too good a person too. Uh, me and Isaac, we were batchmates. In fact, we spent three years in FDII and later also we were closely associated. In fact, the film that uh, later Shaji directed, which I produced, he also did the music for that. Uh, and later on, I not me, many people will know that uh, the last thing he did was he was working, uh, we were did, uh, not working, we did uh, record uh, Punjabi songs for a short film that I was doing, in fact. And later on, now also we were working on a other uh, project, which was a religious song, uh, Arti, Guru Nanak Dev's Arti, that we were working on. When Shaji uh, called me one evening and said, our friend is no more. Uh, somehow, even today, I, I'm not come to the uh, term of the fact that he's no more. In fact, sometimes, you know, I feel like calling him and said, you know, but, uh, and in fact, as I shared with Shaji, Shaji said the same thing, right, more or less, you know, sometimes I feel like calling him and say, uh, Isaac, let's do something like this. So I don't know, for me, it's almost uh, uh, difficult to believe that he's no more. Uh, but uh, but of course, we, he's no more, and he's. Uh, I have. I, I think he's one of the nicest person I've ever met. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, I met Shaji also uh, through him. In fact, uh, if you remember Shaji, that we were, you know, shooting for a film, and then met. Now, there's nothing uh, 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 much I can say more than what all other friends have said, except that we had, you know wonderful time and we were actually he was uh, planning to direct a film uh, for me which of course never came to being we were working on a script and what it continued for a long time and then and even now you know as the last thing that he did was Punjabi songs I mean I didn't know even a, a word of Punjabi and not many people know that he was also working on a Pakistani film which not many people know about. You know, he had given me some music long time back, which I used for one of my short film or something. And some, some guy from Pakistan liked it and he wanted him to direct. He also went to his house, in fact. This was a long time back. Now he was starting with, of course, Isaac is gone today and he's not, physically he's not with us, but uh, I think we'll you know, always remember him and he'll be always, uh, part of our discussion or conversation. And again, Shashi, I'll thank you very much for organizing this and remembering our friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sukhum. I, I now request uh, Mr. John Paul, who's a writer, a scriptist. Uh, is he here? John Paul, are you here? Would you please say a few words? Is, are you here, Mr. John Paul? I'm not sure that I saw it. Okay, we'll probably come back to it in case uh, he's there. Uh, another film director with whom Isaac has worked a lot uh, um, film is uh, TV Chandran. And uh, I request him now to say a few words. TV Chandran, please unmute yourself. Hello. Ah, yes. Can you? Yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Sashi, for giving me this opportunity to, to think. remember I said. It's almost unbelievable that one year has passed after he's left us. I actually met Isaac uh, during the post-production of Adam Indian's film, Tambu. That was way back in 1977, I think. So, there I was assisting Adam Indian in the dubbing process. 
I was to do the dubbing for one actor called Kottara Gobala Vishnu, who was playing the role of a local journalist in the film, who comes to interview the circus camp. And he later joins the temple authorities for announcing the temple festival. So he was reading a notice on the program of the temple festival. This notice reading has to be dubbed. So it's, as it happens with Arivindana's other films, there was no pilot track there. There was no reference to the script. The only thing that was available was the notice. And the notice was missing. So we had to go to the screen, look at the man, look at his lip movement and create what he would have spoken. Of course, Arivindana Rumbas, it is from 7 to 7.30 is the Tayambaga. These are the things. But he was doing it in a very fast way. So me and Isaac, we sat in front of that giant screen, spattered in front of it, and spent a long, lot of time trying to decipher what this man was speaking. That was the starting point of our friendship. So it actually started in a sound studio. And later it developed in different sound studios when he became my music director. And um, after this... I didn't work for Arvindan again, but I used to go for the preview of the films and I used to, like Kumati, Estapan and all that, I used to meet Isaac there, on and off. Once I met him in a railway station, I mean, inside a train, and I was traveling to Kerala from Madras, uh, I went out of the compartment to have a cigarette and I, Isaac followed me there. He talked, told me about a music album he was preparing. And he was giving me music, I mean, different different uh, organ, different instruments and all that, through and making uh, actions and all that. So I couldn't make out much of it, but I could see the passion of music for him. And he wanted me to put him, I mean, take him as a music director in one of my films. But I didn't take him that serious then. But after seeing Sachi Kumar's Kaya Paran, I was very highly impressed by the music he put in in that film. Immediately, my next film, Kadave Session, I brought Isaac as my music director. And it was a great experience for me, the kind of layering he put in on the music. And we did five films together after that, continuously. So it was then that I used to know him better. And in my own, I mean, more than the music sessions and all that, after the film was shown, we used to come out and there he will talk about the cinema, not about the music or anything. He will talk about the entire cinema, how we appreciate this film, how the uh, final points of the film. Because as others were saying here, he used to know cinema better than most of the people. And he was not like, not like any other music director, you know, he was like a person who knows cinema. And for him, I, I have noticed his deep belief in Christianity and his deep faith in music. I think these two things go together because his belief in Christianity actually made me think that Christian religion is something more deeper than what we see in the bishops going out of the court and coming out and all that. It was not that kind of a Christianity he believed in, but he believed in a real kind of a Christianity and he believed in music. And I remember when when I was doing a film called Ardun Bhutti, a Tamil film, uh, my producer, because there was no funds, the funds were over, my producer ran away, later to become the vice president of uh, uh, Producers Association. Uh, so the actor, Charan, who was doing the main role in the film, was to complete the film. So we both went to the music director. He was one of the greatest, biggest, names in South Indian cinema. The music director wanted five lakhs rupees for, for a sitting. And the remuneration will be taken care of later. So Charan asked me, when, when we came out of the studio, Charan asked me, there was a music director whom you were referring to, your friend. Why not be approaching? So we went to Isaac. And Charan and Isaac, I introduced Charan to Isaac. 
and chair and asked him what would be your remuneration. So Isaac said, my first concern is to do a film with Chandra. We will think about the other things later. So this was his attitude towards me, towards cinema itself. It was not a money-making process for him. Isaac used to tell us, when I when I phone him up, he will say that, I just remembered you in my prayers. Your, your name has just appeared in my prayers. It was, if somebody else says that, you won't have to believe it. But in Isaac's case, it was totally true. Isaac keeps you in his prayers. And Isaac sends you uh, every January 1st messages of the New Year messages. The last 20, 19, uh, 2021 January, he sent me a message saying, I remember you. I mean, all the best wishes and all that. I haven't deleted the message yet. I keep it as a memory. I will always keep it, cherish the memory of that person. As Sakarya and others were saying, that, as Shashi and Sakarya and others were saying, there's no a person without any malice uh, who never thinks kill of others, who was such a pure, great character, cultured man. I will always miss him and I take it as a great opportunity that I could remember him. Thank you, Shashi. Thank you, Chandra. Thank you very much. And I'll request uh, one of our uh, brilliant editors in the film industry, Srikar Prasad, uh, whom I rated very highly, uh, to say a few words. Hi, Shashi. Thanks Hello. a lot for this opportunity. I think uh, I've had a very good, uh, I think, long journey with uh, Isaac. It's been for about, I think, more than three decades. And uh, it was, I, I never even knew that he was uh, such a good musician when I met him because I was working with him on his uh, um, ad films, you know, where uh, we were working on different scripts. But one thing was for sure that he was a very committed and a passionate filmmaker and like Shaji sir said, very honest uh, filmmaker. So that was the memory I have had of him initially when, you know, and continuously working on quite a few ads, which he was doing for different products and stuff. Like that. And then it went on and then I realized that he was into music. It was a little surprise to me, but then I started seeing what music he was doing and then uh, and I found that he was so passionate about his work, uh, whether it was film direction or music or whatever. So, you know, I mean, he was a true gentleman in that sense. And uh, the best part was that he uh, uh, liked cinema and it was not a commercial proposition for him. So it, at some point, he want to go to him and say that there's a small film which requires some music is it possible to accommodate them? And he would readily agree for that sort of thing. You know, where I put him on some Assamese filmmakers or some other filmmakers down south, things like that. So we used to have this uh, mutual admiration for each other's work. And uh, it, it went on for uh, I mean, 30 years. And I would always wait. I mean, it, we wouldn't be speaking every day, but whenever the call comes, you know, we'd probably end up speaking for 30 minutes or 40 minutes and we wouldn't be speaking anything else except probably the work we did or the work which is happening outside and the cinema and how cinema has to be uh, good and progressive and, you know, uh, what is pure cinema, that sort of thing. So that really sort of inspired me, although I was working in all sorts of cinema, the, uh, his call and his thing. And the only thing I missed from him was that he, he had sounded out so many of his uh, uh, story ideas which he wanted to make as films. And I was always waiting for him to make them into the film format, and uh, which uh, didn't happen for whatever reasons. It didn't happen. Um, and I think he left us too early. There was a lot much more he could have offered the film industry or friends like us. And I do really miss him, Shashi. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Srikar, very much. And I'll request Swaroop Tina Ruben. Uh, are you here with us, Swaroop? Please yeah, say a few yeah, words. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, 
Isaac came into my life because somewhere amidst direction and music, as most of you know, and as Srika Prasad was just saying, he was one of the most successful advertising filmmakers in South India for well over a decade. And what started as a professional relationship very soon became a strong bond, a very strong friendship across the years. A few days ago, when uh, we were helping a relative decide on a name for his son, I stumbled upon the fact that Isaac means one who rejoices. Come to think of it, Isaac was really true to his name. He truly rejoiced in this, uh, 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 like it was said here before, in a, he rejoiced in his love for his God, in his love for Chitra, in his love for his work, in his love for his stories, his storytelling, his music, his craft, which is probably why connecting with Isaac always made me happy. He was one of the few people I would want to talk with after seeing what I thought was a good movie or after reading a good book. And then would begin a conversation, almost always on the phone, that would go on and on and on, at times for even two to three hours. And the beauty of every dialogue, the beauty of every conversation would always be the sweep. It would span writers, directors, locations, and almost inevitably, as everyone here has said, there would be, it would include one of Isaac's own stories. He was, um, what would you call it? He was a repository of stories. Many of them endemic to his Kerala. Many of them set in exotic locations worldwide. And some of them set in locations that belonged entirely to Isaac's mindscape. I remember sitting in Kovalam with him in 1992. I think that was the year we first met, listening to a story of his called Akulata Inambechi. And after that, I've listened to so many stories across 30 long years, you know, uh, most of which had Isaac's unmistakable strain of pathos and the uh, invisible yet, what do you call it, omnipresent spirit that controls the fate of mortals, so to speak. And if you're sitting with him, listening to his story would almost be like watching a movie. He was a very animated storyteller, which is probably why meeting Isaac was always the high point of my Chennai trips. And we would inevitably end up having a meal together, which in turn would inevitably end with his favorite dessert, which eventually I too, it grew on me, lychees with ice cream. And what was magical was also the fact that across these 30 years, Isaac looked just the same. It was perhaps this look coupled with the classic irreverence gifted by the advertising industry that gave me the courage to call him by his name without a prefix or a suffix, in spite of the fact that we were born almost two decades apart. So Isaac was, I think, many things rolled into one. He was young, he was old, he was local, he was global. He was a bridge between many generations of filmmakers, of great filmmakers. And Isaac could tell a story in 30 seconds. He could tell a story in three hours. He made ad films, he made music. And most importantly, I think, uh, Isaac made relationships special. He was a kind, caring, empathetic soul. And like many people said, the only thing I was slightly upset about for some time after his passing was the fact that he had not yet created his magnum opus, the big movie that he always wanted to make. But I suspect he shied away from that and devoted himself entirely to music because he was a gentle perfectionist. And this big, loud, harsh, egoistic, eccentric, tantrum-filled, game-playing world of cinema perhaps worried him. And in a way, maybe we should be glad he shied away because to borrow a line from that famous song, uh, Vincent by Don McLean, that world was never meant for one as beautiful as you. <clears throat> I guess what we, his family and friends will have to do now is to let him go happily. Like many of you said, I've never really gotten over the fact that he's no longer there and I'm, I'm not going to call him or he's not going to call me. Uh, I think it is... One year down the line, I think what is left to do is to let him go happily and gracefully so that he can be Isaac, the one who rejoices in the world that he is in now. 
I, I, I really thank you, um, Shashi Kumar, for bringing all of us together. And thank you, Chitra, for inviting me to be here today. It means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Swaroop. Uh, I now request uh, Dr. Girija. Girija is uh, Isaac's sister-in-law, Chitra's sister, uh, who is with us today to say a few words. Thank you, Shashi, for organizing this uh, meeting. Talking about Isaac is a major challenge to me now, for two reasons. First of all, I should speak about Isaac without getting too emotional. And secondly, I have to speak about him in the past tense. After knowing Isaac very closely over the years, I realized there are several dimensions and several facets to him beyond what you all have been talking about. Yes, when we first meet him, it is a lot of filmmaking and music. Um, every time we meet, he will tell us a story and a different story each time he had a lot in store. Uh, he, was, he had a heightened sense of aesthetics, patience for details, whether he's making a film or a music or constructing a house. He, was, he had an artistic talent in him. He could, if, he, if there's nobody around, he would grab a paper, pick up a pencil or a pen and start drawing lines, which would look like several different faces which a cartoonist makes in the newspaper. So this is one dimension of Isaac, which we all know. There is another dimension of Isaac. He had very sterling qualities, as some of you or more, all of you mentioned. He was a very genuine friend. He valued friendship. And his behavior, you, could, you would never falter. And um, this was the other side of Isaac. But he was a perfect host, extraordinary uh, quality of taking care of his guests. If anybody has stepped into Isaac's house, you would know what I mean. And if you also happen to stay with him, he would ensure that everything went right, starting from bed to what bed linen you should have. He would make you so comfortable. But beyond all this, what struck me as the most um, attractive thing about Isaac is his modesty. You will never know what exactly are his achievements. He will never tell you. If you step into his office, you will find numerous um, medals and awards and things like that. I'll give you an example. Once Mukundar and I went to his office and then we found him deeply engrossed in playing piano some Western classical piece. Knowing us so closely, we never knew that he first of all knew to play piano. And secondly, that he was properly trained in Western classical music. And of course, he, I know he went on to do a lot of music and uh, some other very catchy tunes. But I consider there is the last one which he made, it is called, it is, he called it Lord's Prayers. Yes, I think it's called Lord's Prayers. And it's a very, um, very outstanding piece that he made. He told me, he told us that he, he has not made it public and he's still working on it. And I do hope that uh, uh, all of you would get to hear this sometime. Now, with all these talents and capabilities, there were certain things that were beyond Isaac. One thing is, he, it's, 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 um, his handling of Tamil language. He could never read that Tamil. He could never learn to write Tamil. 
and whenever he tried to speak tamil it was so awkward so what happened once he was called for a interview in a tamil channel so we were all asking him i said what are you going to speak in a tamil channel he was totally unfazed anyway he went and it was a live telecast and we all were listening to him and then when it was all over all his malayali friends were very impressed they said oh isaac spoke so well in tamil and he handled it so well very soon a friend of chitra who said tamilian called chitra and said chitra isaac did a damn good job he managed the entire interview in malayalam itself so this is something which i thought i should uh, tell you now you know about um, one more instance i would say that he had a strange sense of humor he once uh, came home the chitra and it was uh, he had not had his dinner so i thought i will quickly fix something for him my refrigerator was stuffed with jackfruits and uh, anyway i pulled out some uh, meat curry out of it and managed to make some dinner for him he happily had his food and at the end of it he said giri do you know that meat curry was smelling of jackfruit so i was quite embarrassed i said i said i'm very sorry um he said no 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 giri no no that's all right but i wish that it was the other way around that mean what he means the jackfruit should smell of meat curry so this was isaac and the only time i see him enjoying his vegetarian food was for onam and he really used to enjoy that meal so i think um with this i should stop what i am saying by ending uh saying that it, he has left a huge vacuum in our family and we are still having really gotten over it and we are coming to terms with that so once again thank you shashi and thank all of you because most of you i know all of you personally who have spoken today except one or two of you so i thank all of you for coming together in the memory of isaac thank you very much thank you thank you very much kirija in fact i have just got a call from music ganesh who was uh, isaac's right hand man in terms of his scoring and music uh, he has been trying to uh, you know come online for the last one hour he says i think unfortunately he's in a place where the connectivity is probably poor so he called me in desperation and said i have been trying for one hour if i manage to come in i'll join uh, but uh, that shows you how and he in fact he was very very keen to to join today and we were also looking forward to him let's hope he gets through we have a few just a few more speakers now uh, i now call upon uh, request uh, uh, isaac's uh, nephew um, uh, isaac's nephew uh, deepak matthew uh, i think he's in los angeles and joining us from there deepak uh, yes no uh, shashi yeah. go ahead yes go ahead, thank you So first of all you know thank you for putting this uh, wonderful you know uh, event together um, some of you have household names to us because I said you used to share so many of your movies so many of the music that you guys used to make with us you know whether it is in Sarup and Sakriya and Shaji you have become household names to us over the years whether it was Adur's films or anything else that you know that Isaac would share with us you know it's been our soul name so i do want to thank you all for taking this time for your kind words you know it's very much appreciated losing isaac takachan my uncle uh, isaac um, chachan isaac to you know takachan to his brothers and to his sisters was so deeply um, so, uh, so, so deeply Uh, troubling i mean it was so unexpected and uh, the grief i think is still with all of us in some way um for me personally you know i wanted to take the time um, to honor him uh, to thank him for the influence that he had on our family for each of my 
brothers and my cousins and my you know aunts and um, you know as uncles you know it was so such a good time to be with him and I just wanted to take a few minutes to share that in fact I asked you know my brother Vinod was supposed to speak I think Shashi had reached out to him and because I was the eldest nephew in the family I kind of pulled rank and said let me go because I do want to tell about so how we were so wonderful with each and every one of us. So my first thing that I had to say is, how do you share? How do you pay tribute to a man that we loved? How do you say goodbye? I mean, you did not get to say that final word or hold his hand and to thank him for being such a part of our lives. He was a beloved and affectionate uncle. To Isaac um, or Itakachin, as he is known to his brothers and his sisters, whether it was from Elsama down, to Animantri, our youngest aunt, he was sorely missed. You know, he was such a good part of their in our our lives. To my dad and to my mom, he was a younger brother. For all of his brothers, whether it was Varkachin, Dhamachin, or Chandichin, or Jonachin, which are still so much a part, he was an essential part of our lives for so long. To my mom and my, to our aunts, our sisters-in-law, he was a dear brother who was not a brother-in-law, but a really like a brother that was always there. You know, Chitra was the love of his life. He used to call her Kochu. We call, used to call her Chitra, Chitrandi, Chitumma, you know. But, you know, every time he was back in Pale or in Anaglam, he would run to be back with her. He always wanted to get back to Chitra, you know. And to Chitrandi, you know, this has been such an unbearable time of loss and of grief. We share in that sense of grief and of pain. We grieve with you. Isaac was a best friend a bedrock, and we know no words can replace that or provide comfort for the loss that you feel. We can only hope that time will heal, and we can only pray that God will provide you comfort and take solace in the fact that we all loved him and that he lives on in our memories. There's so many precious memories that I want to share, but most of all, since this is an occasion to share his passion for music, and his love for, you know, films, you know, that's also something we wanted to talk about. But for us personally, you know, he was always there for every function, whether it was a baptism for Manita's kid or for a get together at a family or for a wedding. Isaac was so much an essential part of our lives, right? We would wait for him to come because, you know, the whole atmosphere in the home would change when Isaac was coming or Itagajajan was coming. We would all run, you know, all the younger brothers and my cousins would say, Thakachajan is coming, you know, so they would all run. Even my grandmother in the time that I spent with her, when she was coming from Madras, the car would put up, they would all be like, Thakachajan has come, Thakachajan has come, right? So he was so precious. He was so loved by each one of us. And he taught us all about that we know about music and arts, right? If I talk about all of the things that he used to do for us, right? When he used to visit us, our fridge was always filled. And right? we knew he would come. He would end up at late at night after a shoot or something that he was doing or a film advertisement that he was doing. And then when he came home, he would always bring a cake, a sweet, or a special eclair from Pandal or any other place that he would be because the house would always be something that he wanted to bring, something he could give to his nephews and his nieces. Right? My first memory of him growing up was as a young man. I must have been 11 or 12, but you know, it's when he came back from IFT and he had created a short film called The Lilies of March. I don't know how many of you remember that, but for us, it was our first experience, especially for Deepa and me, it was a first experience of actually seeing a film that he created and is explaining the plot. And he could go into excruciating detail into every part of it to what Sarup was saying earlier. He could tell a story in 10 minutes, or he could take the time to explain it and to say it and go on for three to four hours, but tell it in a lot of detail for each one of us. 
for us, he brought us a love of music, right? As growing up with him, he had this Western classical collection of all gramophone records, right? So whether it were the Four Seasons from Vivaldi or a Bach violin concerto or a Strauss Vienna means world, you know, he would play it for us and then he would explain the moments and the different stages of the music and explain what the crescendos meant. And he did the same thing with Western classical music, right? And he would do that for the music of, you know, uh, you know the songs from Adi Berman and Leather and Kishore Kumar songs that he would share with Chandichan and Animanti and all of us. And even sometimes, you know, we would dip into a little bit of rock, old rock and roll, a little bit of Beatles songs and a hippie shake that we would grab down to in our home in Palai. You know, Isaac was somebody that loved the movies. You know that better than most. He could explain about every Oscar winning movie that he had. You know, growing up, he could explain a particular shot or tell about a mistake that he thought he saw in the film, a great piece of acting, or he could repeat a dialogue or a script from the movie so many times. His favorite actor, uh, I mean, I would say his favorite director was David Lean. You know, some of the movies that he really enjoyed was, you know, maybe the shots that we had from the bridge on the river Kwai. You know, Jonich and my uncle were saying that he loved the white snow in Dr. Shivago or the desert contrast in the Lawrence of Arabia. For me, he was the one who explained to me Akira Kurosawa. I didn't know who that was. You know, he'd explained to me Akira Kurosawa's Iran movie. And I ended up seeing a lot of Akira Kurosawa's movies, you know, just because of the fact that he told me to go see those movies. So he prompted us to watch, you know, movies that we typically would not have watched, what you call the art movies, the platoon, the deer hunter, the Star Wars movies, everything was a part of Isaac's or Itaka Chajan's influence on us. Right. He loved the theater and the arts. And, you know, we would often watch along with my uncle Koryach and we had this whole dish TV back in our background in Palai, a big one. Right. And we would pick up signals from that and we would watch a little bit of the Bolshoi ballot, a little bit of the Kuro ballet, you know, that we would get from a Russian channel that we would hack and we would actually see it. My last, you know, memories was me when I went down and I stayed with him in Chitra. He was so hospitable. Right. But the movie, the thing that I remember more that he was like a child and friend of uh, in a museum or an art movie or a gallery that he saw that he absolutely loved. You know, when he was promoting Adam in the Maganabu, you know, which was maybe at that time, maybe something that was in contention, he came over to stay with me. And I think I took him out, you know, to see all of the little. Um, you know, the museums down here in the Washington DC area. And he loved it, you know, he loved the museums, you know, so whether it was the Louvre up in Paris or, you know, going down to the Metropolitan New York that he would love that, or even the Smithsonian art museums, the modern art museums, he would spend some time there, especially at the art museums. And for me, I would walk through that museum in like an hour and be done with it, but he would actually stay in front of a of a little, uh, you know, of a, of a picture or, or an art painting and spend time enjoying every part of it and then explaining different nuances, different shading of the lights from all of that. So for us, he taught us a lot about a love for the arts and the theater that only he could bring to life within us, right? There was this one particular instance where I was driving down on George Washington Parkway into DC and it was the fall. Right, and we had just gone up to Shenandoah Valley together with him to see that. And we came back and we were driving through George Washington Parkway and it was a beautiful fall with all the colors of purple and gold and, and the sunlight shining through and he loved that, right? And he wanted me to drive back and forth in the driveway a couple of times so he could take in the beauty and he would take, he would be out of, you know, take his camera out and be clicking pictures onto something that I took for granted. The beauty, of it, you would see beauty in everything that we had. There are so many things that I wanted to share. You know, I mean, there's so little time. But I want to conclude by saying he is loved. He was loved by my family. He was loved by each and every one of my dear brothers and my cousins and my cousin sisters and my aunts and his brothers. He is loved and remembered. He is never going to be forgotten. I take comfort in the fact that, you know, I see a little piece of him every day in my son that I named after him. So I thank you all for taking this time. 
um, to share in his remembrance, for sharing your stories. For each one of you that has shared a story, you know, given me a little piece of my uncle to treasure, you know, um, whether Sukhwanda or anybody else that, you know, Shaji, for everything that you shared, it has become so much a part of our lives going forward. So I thank you, Shashi. Thank you so much once again for organizing it. It's so much appreciated. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deepak. Um, I'm, I have just three other persons on my list. Uh, is Rajiv Menon here with us? Rajiv, if you're here, would you, would you please say a few words? Filmmaker Rajiv Menon. Rajiv probably hasn't been able to join. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to request uh, uh, Benny Kuriakos, you know, who is an architect. And uh, if you see the house that Isaac lived in in Chennai, you have a sense of the perfectionist that he was. And Benny was his architect. So it must have been a unique experience for Benny also to work with Isaac and Isaac to work with uh, Benny. Uh, uh, Benny Kuriakos, are you here? Yeah. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Thanks, Shashi. Uh, our relationship was very different. In fact, I mean, the, there was an existing house in that plot. Being Isaac a perfectionist, I mean, I, mean, I think it took a long time to take a decision whether to renovate the house or demolish the house and build a new one. Finally, the decision. It, it might have taken a year at least to do it. But there was no difference of opinion. I mean, we agreed on almost everything. And uh, he loved Western architecture also. I mean, because his love for Western music can be seen in the house. The most of the images of what he talks about each of the elements of the house. There were a lot of elements which is from the American or the Western architecture can also be done. One of the other things is was a man of detail. The house reflects Isaac more than anybody else. Isaac and Jethra is very, I mean, every detail he used to go into. And he used to be so friendly with an ordinary carpenter also. He knew everybody by name and he was talking to them. He used to tell about his ideas, his design. I mean, so everybody who contributed to the house, everybody became part of the family that was very much there. And uh, the other thing which was there, I mean, Chitra and Isaac, Isaac always valued Chitra's opinion. He never went against them. I mean, they were so much agreeing onto the same thing. And uh, uh, the final word, when I say something, let me discuss. If he's only Isaac is there, he will say, I will discuss with Chitra and confirm it, which was there always. And But their taste was very similar. And I think Chitra will take a long time to come out of the shock. But doing the house, our relationship was not just that of a designer and a client. When Chennai floods came in 2015, my house was flooded 11 feet of water. In the middle of the night, water rose up. Both my cars were drenched. I had to escape in a boat. And it happened, the floods happened midnight, early morning hours. And six o'clock, a call comes from Isaac please come to my house. And I said, I have a dog also. Isaac said, please come with the dog. <laughs> and uh, that was Isaac. He did not have anything. I mean, that was one of the first calls. I went to Isaac's house. I stayed in Isaac's house for me and my wife and my dog stayed in Isaac's house for more than two weeks. And uh, I mean, you know how Isaac keeps the house by... My, no, my dog was not trained to use that house. Because <laughs> Isaac already had a dog which is much bigger. Mine was a small lassap. So, so we cannot leave him outside. So he used to pee in the timber floors and everything. Isaac, I mean, Isaac was so, I was so 
uh, upset with her doubting by i said on the other side say don't worry i mean it's all part of the thing so we had a very very kind of uh relationship i said gap can never be filled and uh, um, i mean it's it's a it's a loss that some of the films that he was or something which he dreamt i mean it's, it's unfortunate that the film never got made and it's it, it, it was a great uh, experience in working with uh, isaac and learning from, from for learning from him thank you shashi thank you thank you very much benny uh, i now request uh, uh, isaac's brother in law uh, chitra's brother mohan raj i think he is with us uh, would you please say a few words i did i must say i i did want to i since we are all friends uh, my i did ask chitra to say a few words at the, at the very end uh, but she said she is not in a state to do that so i deferred to her wishes uh, but chitra is with us and uh, I, i'm sure uh, this is a great um, occasion for emotional bonding for, for her as well mr mohan raj please go ahead for giving me this opportunity now first of all whatever i want to say about isaac has already been said by so many people who have spoken so well about him all his talents and his personality all his personal traits everything has been explained so now i have to figure out what i must say now let me think of some incidents i have known isaac for a very long time i first met him in 1968 in christian college when he was doing his graduation i was doing my ca and some of my friends from loyola had joined christian for post graduation i used to go and spend time with them that's where i met him and we soon became very good friends what struck me about him was his personality that is the way he conducts himself extremely polite soft spoken never a harsh word to anybody this was rather rare among college students especially my gang we were very very brusque about many of our uh, opinions and i uh, use whatever language we thought was good enough to express our feelings but isaac was never given to profanity or abusive language he used to be always soft spoken even when he gets angry it is very difficult for him to express himself he would rather say a very few words che che stu bad that's all nothing more than that so this was the man i met first and surprisingly throughout his life no matter what the adversities what the difficulties he went through he maintained this dignity and decorum about him in a very remarkable manner and i should now think of some incidents when i met him he already had this passion about films he was doing his undergraduation in christian he made it very clear that he plans to go to film institute to do his uh, course in film direction today when you ask me to speak about anything associated with isaac's music i must tell you that isaac was much more than music his main love when i met him and till the very end it was film making in its totality film direction especially and that's what he qualified for in pune institute and even before he went there i have met him after my chennai 3 uh, years with him i moved over to cochin university for my masters degree in financial management at the time he was in palai he used to come and pick me up in his car and take me to a beautiful house they had on the banks of periyar that is where i said more in this atmosphere by the way he used to call me more in those days much later after 1982 when i became a brother in law my family called me babu he called he started calling me babu he said mohan this is the serene atmosphere which inspires music in me i agree in fact that's the first time he spoke about music otherwise it was all film direction and his film direction included all aspects of the film including camera work the angles the lighting the costume even editing and of course music and uh, i was a guy who knew a few actors and i used to go to a film if it's uh, starring a main big time actor but i went for the film camelot with isaac in safair when i came out i was all praised for vanessa redgrave and richard harris but isaac told me 
none of them got an Academy Award. It is Frederick Lowe who scored the music he got the award. Next film I saw with him was Beckett. I was impressed by Peter O'Toole's acting, but Isaac said it is the scriptwriter who got the award. Like this, he was so uh, in detailed about every aspect of film. In fact, sitting with Isaac, conversation is very easy because as a conversationist, all that Isaac expects of you is just listen. You just got to listen. He can go on for hours together because the topic is something about which he was so passionate. And in the course of sitting with him so many times, I have come to know things I would have never known otherwise. Directors starting from Sergei Eisenstein of Russia, Ingema Bergman of Sweden, a bunch of French directors like uh, Don Luc Godard, Alan René, Francois Truffaut. The list is endless. Italian, that is starting with uh, Federico Fellini, down to Vittoria De Sica, Bernardo Bertolucci, then Spaniard, Bunuel, like this, so many. Then he goes on, even Japanese directors, uh, people like uh, all kinds of... Uh, uh, Akiro, Akiro um, Kurosawa. Kurosawa and very many others. And his knowledge of international films were so wide. He knew Iranian directors, Taiwanese, Brazilian, and not only films, many arts, performing arts, especially music, other than music, painting. If he starts to talk about painting, he will talk about Cubist, Impressionist, Picasso, Salvador Dali. He had someone here at, when, when he was asked by comparison between Dali and Picasso. Isaac said, Dali is a surrealist. You don't compare him with a cubist like Picasso. Like this, on every aspect of art, he had such detailed knowledge. Today, Shashi, it is easy for you, the click of a button, you can get names of directors or films or who are the people involved behind a film or who are the great directors of a of a country, all this you can get the click of a button. But those days, accumulating this much knowledge was phenomenal effort. And what I admire in him is capacity for details that is required of a professional. And he had it in tremendous measure. And he could absorb so many things about a matter in such detail and then present it to somebody in the in a manner which is not very easy for anyone else to emulate. That is the real talent of Isaac. And uh, certain incidents, in case you are going on a travel to some place, he will tell you what are the things you should look for, which are the main things to uh, see there and how to go about it. When I was in Yugoslavia taking care of my liquor manufacturing business, I came back every time I used to meet Isaac and say that I used to go across to Greece places like Thessaloniki, Athens, Porto Caras, all the beach resorts and all that. Isaac said, Mon, you are so much interested in music. Why don't you go across to Budapest, which is just a driving distance from Belgrade? On his suggestion, I went there. But before going, Isaac gave me so much about Budapest and Hungarian music. He said, Budapest Philharmonic Or Orchestra has had guest conductors like Franz Liszt, Gustav Mahler, um, uh, Anton Duharak from Czechoslovakia, locally great conductors like uh, George Solti, uh, Fritz Reiner, they're all Hungarian. He said Hungary has produced great composers like Franz Liszt, Sultan Kodali, Bela Bartok. The amount of things he told me about uh, Budapest in Hungary, I first thing I did after landing in Belgrade next time was to take a drive to Budapest. And it was not at all disappointing. He also told me there are very many virtuoso piano people, piano artists who could give solo performances all the time it is there. And he also said you could go to ballet like Swan Lake. And incidentally, I saw the Hungarian version of Swan Lake of Tchaikovsky. So it was a real, very good experience prompted by Isaac. And uh, even Benny was talking about the house design. Isaac was very versed in architecture. He, when, he, when I went to Thessaloniki, he told me, go see the town hall there, this, uh, designed by a Japanese architect, Aisusaki Arata. Like this, so many matters about even architecture, he was fully versed, conversant. This is it. And there are very many other personal things I would like to narrate. When I was promoting my 
a major venture in business, a 50,000 liter alcohol plant. I was doing the financials. Isaac asked me only one question, Babu, how much profit will this venture earn? I told him, Isaac, it is a very, very profitable venture because very good alcohol right now is in short supply in this country. And once this plant takes off from the very first month, it will earn profits. When I told him this much was it, he told me, just two months of your profits is enough to make the movie on which I am now presently dreaming about. <laughs> I have done its screenplay, its uh, editing, its uh, uh, music, its uh, costume design, everything, screenplay, everything is ready. Isaac said, I told him, definitely Isaac, the first two months profits are yours. You can take it and make the movie. And as things would happen, that venture flopped. And when I met Isaac, after the difficulties I went through with that project, he says, Babu, it was my bad luck, not yours, which I said, I said, no, 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 I don't believe in all that. It is definitely not your bad luck. Whatever has happened has happened. He, that is the way he, this, his, his passion for movie making. And um, once when I came to Chennai, I met him. He had just received an award for a music. He scored for a movie. It was, uh, I don't remember the name of the Malayalam movie. Incidentally, he told me, Babu, it's a low budget film. The people who produced it, the amount they paid me, I could not even meet the expenses of the studio, the ensemble, the cost of the artists and uh, the instruments. I could. Then I asked him, being a businessman, I said, why are you doing this? That's when he told me something which I always remember with a lot of sadness. He said, my passion in life has been to make a movie, to direct a movie. And I was not able to do it. And this great regret, I want to get over it, this disappointment, this frustration, that is by associating with movies, by scoring music for it. And that's what kept him going, despite all these low budgets and everything. Uh, so these are all the things I can remember about Isaac. Now I think everybody else has spoken enough about it. Now let me end this thanking you, Shashi. You are such a close friend of his. I have heard about you from the time you were running the advertisement Aishwarya, advertisement filmmaking. Subsequently, when he went to you, when you went to Middle East to report for Hindu, he missed you very much. He used to make me read your reporting from Middle East. Then, when you returned and launched your very successful venture, Asianet, he was part of it. And finally, he was so full of praise for you for your establishing the School of Journalism in association with Hindu. He really admired the way, manner in which you have achieved that. And uh, let me know, thank you for having organized this. All the very best, Shashi, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mohanraj. I think with that, my list of uh, invitees to speak today comes to an end. Uh, we could go on and on about Isaac, there's no doubt about the better, because there are so many aspects of his uh, life uh, that uh, keep coming back to me almost on a daily basis. Uh, I'm sure he will continue to figure in our thoughts, not just in our thoughts, in our conversation about cinema, about uh, music, about cinematography, about editing, every department of, uh, of, of, of cinema. And as has now become obvious, also about the ally arts, other arts, you know, whether it's architecture or painting or music or the opera, with, about which he was very passionate. So Isaac uh, uh, has not only touched our lives, he has enriched our lives in ever so many subtle and manifest ways. Uh, so I have no doubt that he will continue to be with us. Uh, he's obviously in a better place and he's probably smiling down at us uh, because we are speaking about him. Uh, we're speaking about attributes about him which he would never speak about himself and he'd be shy of. Uh, and uh, the moment we raise something like that, he'd try and change the conversation. So that was Isaac, and uh, Isaac will remain, he will endure. I want to thank the family first for being with us today. I want to uh, say to Chitra that, uh, uh, I mean, she, she, she was very fortunate to have a husband like him, and he was very fortunate to have a wife like him. And uh, we were all very fortunate to have him as a colleague, a friend, a brother. Thank you very much. Before we sign off, I request Srinivasan to play the opening montage uh, just to remember those images again. And I hope we will continue to be in touch in one form or the other. Isaac will be 
the bond and the bind the things hello sir excuse me excuse me yes sir I'm ganesh oh I'm yes yes no. that's excellent excellent sorry, ganesh sorry, excuse, sorry. no this, so excuse i was saying this is a music ganesh whose presence was so uh, vital and he has been trying to join us for about an hour and hour plus and i'm so happy to <laughs> yeah, see sir. you and so so you see you you can never isaac will never leave you <laughs> you you are here in the nick of the time so go thank ahead sulanga please please go ahead and say tell us a few no, words no, about no, your no, no, i am no voice it's my god father he i say every is the world another world eh huh? award world is only because of him he only uh, taught me even keyboard playing also he, he only he, he insist me to learn he is also always a be a student at <laughs> time is childish i don't know i have no, no words after all the hearing all this you are friends are talk. so god i am praying god for his just in peace sir. thank you sir thank you so much thank you thank you ganesh you know ninga vandha romba naanga ella na sollindirundha ninga oru 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 avara try pannindirukkaru aama aama thank you so much for being here and without thank you, you this 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 uh, meeting would not have been complete so it is uh, thank you. The, the 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 final isaac touches that you were here you know to to, to thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you so much so very much Sinu Hasan, will you play the uh, end montage? And I, I, I thank all of you again for being with us today. And uh, I'm sure we will meet or be in touch in the future. Isaac will, in one way or the other, bring us all together again. Thank you very much. Sinu Hasan. Ah uh.